You big chilling with a baddie and she asking you how do airplanes fly. She don't really care about planes. She just love to hear you talk. So this is what you tell her when she asks you how do airplanes fly. Let go. Boom. So check it. We did all seen many planes in our lifetime. But do you really understand what makes them fly? How do they get off the ground and how are they able to stay in the air? The more understanding you have of this and the better your understanding is on the subject matter, it's going to actually make it easier for you to be a pilot because you're going to understand the science behind it and understand that you don't have to power or muscle your way through anything. The plane wants to fly. It just needs you to guide it and to command it. That's it. Pilot in command. That's all you have to be to the plane to have the best time of your life. So let's get right into it about how do planes fly. Let go. When it comes down to how airplanes fly, it's all about the lift that's receiving to be lifted into the air. And to really understand lift, it's really just two people you need to be concerned with, Bernoulli and Newton. Them the two homies you're going to have to roll with that's going to kind of lay down the theory of lift. So let's start with your boy Bernoulli first and what he was all about. The very thing he was about was just talking about the differences in pressure when air is going over the wing. So boom, we got our plane right here. We dipping, we sliding, we swinging and banging in that thing. And just think about this wing right here and how the air is responding to this wing. When the air is flowing, air is flowing over the top of that wing, air is flowing over the bottom of that wing, and air is also hitting that wing and then rolling over the top. So Bernoulli's principle was simple. When the air flows at the bottom, it creates this high pressure system that pushes up on the bottom of the wing. The air that flows over the top creates a low pressure system that pushes down ever so slightly. And what's happening is that high pressure system pushing up generates that lift. So that's all it's doing. Air, you constantly moving with the speed and you picking up that speed and picking up that speed and picking up that speed. That air is flowing over those wings. That air at the bottom pushing up and hey, there it is. Take off, baby. Boom. That's Bernoulli, and that's what he was down with, and that's the genius that he had in him like that. Hey, hey, now you got your boy Newton. So they collaborating on this thing, man. Two different theories and the lift and how things are operating, and you can see what Newton was talking about right here. Newton was all about the fact that, hey, yeah, that whole speed thing and getting the air over the wings, all that, yeah, we see you, we see you, we see what you're doing. But also, too, when the plane goes back and it creates that kind of angle right there, and that wind hits it, that relative wind that's always flowing opposite of the flight path and it hits the bottom of that wing. What it's doing is it's hitting that wing, bouncing off the ground, and it's pushing you and creating that lift as well. So that's almost that's considered the angle of attack where that relative wind is hitting the cord line of that wing and creating that lift as well. So you kind of see how these things are working in conjunction together. And when you think about it, they both are kind of working collaboratively together. You think about moving down the runway. When you're moving down the runway, what are you doing? You're creating, if it's just rolling on the ground, you're creating the speed. The more speed that you get, think about, of course, your rotation speed. It's the reason why you have a certain rotation speed on whatever aircraft you're flying. It wants to be up to certain levels to make sure there's enough wind going over those wings and under those wings to create that high pressure system to help you generate lift. That's why it's designated as that rotation speed, and that's why it's recommended that you be at that rotation speed before you rotate. So you want to make sure that you have enough speed and the air build up to kind of generate that, that, that lift that you need. So that's one aspect. But then you also know when you take off as well, you're, you're pulling back a little bit ever so slightly. And when you're pulling back, what are you doing? You're creating that nice angle. So how they're working together. I'm picking up the speed. I'm getting the air over the wings. All is good. I'm already starting to help generate that lift. You can already feel the plane. Even when it's on the ground and you've generated enough lift, it's like it wants to take off. It's like it's giving you a little bit already. That's that high pressure getting up under those wings. Then when you rotate, that accelerates the, the process even more because now you got creating that angle of attack and that's helping you elevate even more out of there. So how they're working together, how you can have two people cooking up something special in the kitchen and they all collaborating together to help you fly and swing and bang that thing. Hey, boom. So let's talk about how Bernoulli was talking about how that velocity can impact the pressure that's happening on that wing. When we floating in that thing and we got that velocity and we pick it up that speed and we do what we do there, just think about how air is flowing in and around this wing. At the bottom of the wing, under it, it's moving very freely. There's no, no obstruction. At the top of the wing, it's moving very freely. But right on the wing, it's being obstructed a little bit, but air is still flowing because we're picking up speed, so it's being forced to go over it a lot faster so it can just make up ground for the fact that it's being obstructed and blocked a little bit. 
And as a result of that, that's what's creating that pressure system that you're seeing, creating a lot more of a suction, low pressure at the top, and push up at the bottom. So it's all about that speed and what it's helping generate. And next time you're in the plane, you're just on the runway, if you particularly if you have a nice long runway to play around with, put in your full power as if you're gonna take off and just let it roll. And once you pick up a certain speed, particularly once you get past that rotation speed, notice how the plane almost kind of lifts itself off the ground and you haven't even done anything. You haven't pulled back yet. That's what's happening. That's Bernoulli's principle at work. Those wings are already starting to work. The pressure system is already starting to change. The dynamic is already starting to change. It's already starting to come up off the ground and you haven't even pulled back yet. That's why it's important to understand this because it shows you how effortlessly it is to fly an airplane. It wants to fly itself. You haven't done anything. It's already getting ready to come up off the runway. That's how special airplanes are. And these theories of lift work in every situation and they can work for you as a pilot. So every time you're thinking about, I want to increase my climb, let's just say you're chilling at five bands and you're trying to get up to seven bands, 7,000 feet, and you're getting ready to start that climb. Think about what two things are going to help you increase that lift to get that climb. More power to create more velocity versus where you are. And then of course, pulling back to create a greater angle of attack to help you get that climb started. Simple, nice, both working in conjunction together, nice and smoothly. And remember, you can only pull back so much before you risk getting into any kind of compromising position. So you wanna make sure you're doing them very fluidly and working in conjunction together to help get you off the ground. If you're already feeling like you're about to get off the ground with the speed that it's going, you only have to pull back gently, ever so slight, and it will begin to take off. And then you can get into your VX or your VY versus feeling like you have to yank back on the yoke just to get the plane off the ground. You don't power or muscle a plane off the ground. It wants to fly. You just let it fly. You just command it and guide it. That's all you're doing. Aviate, navigate, communicate. Ay. So when that baddie asks you how the planes fly, you just tell her, it fly itself, baby. I just got it and command it one time. Ay. Don't forget to like this video, share this video, and comment down below. Subscribe to this channel. I am Donovan Batiste. Hey, this is Leadership Mindset. Subscribe to this channel for more pilot talk, for all the free information that you need to know to help you get your pilot's license. If you're already a pilot to help you stay current, to help you stay proficient, and to just have all around fun while we do this thing. Swinging and banging. Hey, one time. Let go.